Hi Sagittarius, this video is for Sagittarius Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. This is for the month of February and we are going to cover quite a bit in this reading. So first of all, I'm going to look at your um, general energy for the month of February. I'm also going to look at the challenges you're going to face. I'm going to look at the vibes that you're putting out. And then we're going to give you like an overall like goal or theme for the month. Then we're going to dive in deep to the area of uh, finance, career, and work. Love if you're single, love if you're coupled, and then your personal growth and development. And then at the very end, I'm also going to give you a crystal for the month because those of you who don't follow me on um, social media might not know, but I'm obsessed with crystals and I really do think they can help you in um, your month and in your healing. So let's get started. <laughs> Sagittarius. Generally in February, what does the month look like for you? What can you expect? Emotional balance and kind of getting your groove back. You might be excited about something, so that's good. Um, they're saying you're feeling totally in control. You're owning this fire sign energy. Um, people are going to look at you and be like, oh yeah, boss man. But inside you might be feeling a little bit sad or disappointed. What's that about? Um, the fact, like, you feel like you're not connecting to people the way that you used to. Um, and I'm getting it, like, specifically via text message. <laughs> it's kind of weird. But it's like, maybe you're sending texts out and, like, you're hoping that somebody in specific responds a little bit quicker than they do. Or um, they're responding with one word answers. I wonder what that's about. Like, is it because they're just, like, not feeling your friendship or your relationship anymore? Or is it because they're busy? Or what's their deal? What's going on with that? Um, huh. Hold on. Let's get a clarifier. <laughs> Weird. They're like, okay, so the answer is going to vary for everybody because you're all de dealing with different people. They're like, you know what, though? Just focus on the fact that you've got your shit together. Emotionally, you're in a good place. You're enthused. Like, things are starting to expand. Um, this is not going to be a problem for you in the area of love. Don't fucking worry about it. All right. I got it. <laughs> what are the vibes that you are putting out in general in the month of February? Sagittarius. Um, that big changes that have happened are good. You know, that you're ready for change, that you're embracing change, that you're excited about it, that you can see that things are moving in a positive direction. So you are Captain Optimism. Hell yeah. But people look at you and they're like, wow, like they are handling it. Like you're, in, it's almost like you're manufacturing and controlling these changes and situations in your life, even though they might have nothing to do with you. They probably have something to do with you, but I mean, a lot of it could be luck or karma or, you know, outside forces, but you're just like owning it. Okay, so your overall goal or area of focus for the month of February is living in the moment, opening up that heart chakra and just like experiencing life minute to minute. Like, what is this um, positive feeling that I'm feeling right now? And, you know, if it's a sad feeling, if you're feeling negative, if you're feeling icky, it's just like, okay, I'm feeling this for a second and now I'm releasing it. I'm not going to carry it with me anymore. Um, so you're going to feel a lot better if you're just kind of like living in the now in the month of February. That's very important for you. In regards to your work, career, and finance, what do we have going on in general for you in February, Sagittarius? Um, you may not feel like you have all of the support that you need in regards to work, career, and finance. You, like, for example, if you need an assistant, if you need a secretary, something like that, um, you might not be getting it. Uh, tech support might not be answering the phone as fast as you want. Or people are not following up the way that you want them to, unfortunately. Um, what are your challenges? <laughs> like, to keep... Okay, so you're like, here's the deal. You recognize that the way that things are going are not necessarily the way that you want them to be going. Like you'd like a change to happen, but for some reason you feel like you can't make it. Um, even though you also recognize, it's a very dualistic energy. It's like you recognize that however things are going doesn't work and you want to make a change, but then there's like a reason why you can't. So a good example would be um, 
when I was teaching before. Um, there were times when I was like, oh my gosh, I really need to hire like another adjunct to help me teach these classes. But then I would hire somebody and then I get irritated because they don't teach the class the way that I wanted to teach it. And then I'm like fucking freaked out, like, oh my gosh, my students are not going to be able to graduate because they won't pass their test because this person doesn't teach the way that I teach. It's like a total control kind of thing. And so, you know, it's like, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, if you don't kind of thing. So it's challenging to kind of navigate that process for you. And so um, the other challenge is also to take the time to really do like some self-love in regards to um, the way that you're spending your money. Like, so you might be feeling like, okay, well, I'm, I'm saving here, I'm doing this, or I'm just like too busy, but you'd actually feel really good about some retail therapy this month. Like if you were to spend some money on um, a new, nice new haircut or a jacket or something weird, I know that sounds strange, um, but they're saying this would be a challenge for you, but it would also be a great benefit. Hmm. Work career finance. <laughs> the vibes that you are putting out in regards to work career and finance, so maybe the way that your colleagues see you or your clients see you, is that you're not so worried about things. You kind of go with the flow. Um, but at the same time, you might not be entirely approachable either because they, because it's like people are not necessarily approaching you because they're afraid of you not speaking your truth, right? Like you're going to take the information that they give you or the suggestion that they give you, you're going to sit on it and you're going to process it and then you're not going to give feedback necessarily. It's almost as, it's not like they see you as a ticking time bomb quite yet, but they do see you as kind of like holding things into yourself. So how can we change that perception? Um, just kind of displaying more of your sa natural Sagittarius qualities, like that confidence and enthusiasm. If people see you happy or excited about something, then, um, then they're more inclined to be open with you. But the other thing here is, so, you know, if you're at work and I'm, I'm, this might be something very specific for one person, but it's the kind of energy of like, everybody's in a conference room or a boardroom. Somebody says something, somebody else attacks that, and you're just sitting there and keeping your feelings or your thoughts to yourself. Your job as an extroverted Sagittarius is to defend that person. Okay. If you agree with them, you don't let them just like sit there and sink. You, you defend them. Even if this person over here is a total bully, that's going to gain a lot of trust or respect from your colleagues and people are going to feel more like open and um, you're going to be more approachable and likable as a result in the month of February. Make sense? Okay. So your goal or your area of focus for the month of February is empowering yourself. Um, so it's saying like, realize that every single day, you get to decide how your day is going to go. Like, am I going to be really positive today or am I going to focus on the negative? That kind of a thing. Like the attitude that you adopt is totally your choice. <laughs> so in regards to your love life, if you are single, what does the month look like? It looks like lusty, passionate encounters are coming for you. If you are coupled, it looks like a really good time. So no matter what for Sagittarius, it looks fun. <laughs> um, what kind of challenges will be, you be facing if you are a single Sag and um, getting to put the past behind you and to not be paranoid that every person coming towards you is like a person from your dating history? If you are coupled, what is the challenge? Whoa. To not feel alone in your relationship. Wow. So you might be having fun, but it might not be with your partner. It might be with your friends. Um, hmm. Now let's look at how others are viewing you. If you are single, they might view you as um, sort of selfish, actually. But they also kind of understand it because they're saying, okay, well, you know, with the world card in reverse and with the nine of wands here, they're saying you haven't completely let go of your past. You're working on putting it behind you, but you do have this like paranoia and fear and that's because you're not totally over it. So your need to be selfish and to say like, 
these are the things that I want. These are the things that I expect in a relationship. This is what I need to know up front. It's not necess- It's not selfish, like, but it could be, sometimes it could be perceived that way, but it's like, they understand it, they get it. They get what your emotional needs are because you're kind of wearing your heart on your sleeve. And so even though they may only be after like a passionate, lustful relationship, they do care a little bit, like anybody coming towards you about your emotional state and what you're going through. And the fact that you do have more emotional balance and that you're kind of more like open and and available for lust is um, a good thing. I think people, people recognize that and they see it. And so you're more inclined to not really have specific expectations in regards to Uh, relationships and dating and things like that like as to where it'll go you're more open this month to have like kind of lusty um casual encounters if that's not always your style um and maybe it still isn't your style maybe that's not you at all but the point is is um you'll feel more confident in speaking about what it is that you want and other people will respect that does that make sense now how are other people going to view you if you are a coupled Sagittarius Well, they definitely see that you don't necessarily get everything that you want or you don't have everything that you want in the month of February with your partner. Your partner recognizes this in you and they understand that things aren't the way that they used to be. Hmm. Sounds like somebody needs a personal reading. (laughs) Um, So how are you going to work through this with your partner? And they're saying just be really super honest with how you're feeling on an instinctual level, but also what you're thinking and understand that things take time to change. Now, In regards to single Sagittarius, again, what is your area of focus or a goal that you could work on in regards to your love life? And they're saying opening up that heart chakra again, transforming your worrisome thoughts. So um, I forget which other sign had this, but it's like with this green energy trying to open up your heart chakra, you can't open it all the way until you release all of the sacral chakra fear. Okay. And so um, she's blowing bubbles. She's blowing her fears out of her auric field. And actually this is an exercise that I do often, like right before I go to bed, I imagine like a white light coming down through my crown chakra and that it's picking up any negative energies or thoughts or fears that I have and like kind of encapsulating them into these little gray or black bubbles. And then every time I exhale, I blow them out. I just like burst them out of my auric field and then replace that energy with light and love from spirit. Um, And then I feel a lot lighter. That way I kind of wake up feeling a little bit better, you know, like ready to start my day. So um, if you decide that you want to carry all this fear and this stress around with you, it's not going to serve you well, right? And now other people are starting to notice it. So just a thought. Okay, for those of you who are coupled, what do we have for your goal or area of focus? Reflecting on your own pride and your ego. (laughs) also related to that sacral chakra. So maybe both of you, um, singles and coupled people, and I mean, even those of you in between, like on again, off again relationships, you might want to um, search on YouTube sacral chakra meditation that you could listen to in order to kind of fix this area. So you'll be reflecting on your own fears again, right? And looking at how you're contributing to the situation with your couple. Why do I feel alone? Am I, when they... Um, try to come towards me and say, hey, um, I love you. Can we talk about this? Am I the kind of person who walks out of the room and shuts the door and like, leave me alone? And But then I also want them to chase me. Like, am I doing that? Am I contributing that way? <laughs> you know, reflect on matters of your own pride and your own ego. And like, how is your pride and your ego maybe causing strain in your relationship and driving you apart? Because you are feeling alone in your relationship are you expecting because this is a very Sagittarius thing to do not to be judgmental but um because you have really awesome positive qualities too but this is a Sagittarius thing to do where it's like okay I'm gonna do all of these things um with the expectation that you understand where this is coming from and how I'm feeling and what I'm thinking but I'm not gonna say that and if you ask me I'm not gonna admit it and then later I'm gonna get mad that you weren't able to read my mind. Like, what the fuck? That's not fair to every other person in the Zodiac. You know what I mean? So reflect on that. Like, are you doing that 
subconsciously? Is this like a behavioral pattern that you have or not? It might not be true for all of you because, you know, as you go through time and you grow up and you go through your life path and you emotionally mature, you start to recognize these habits and then you start to sort of um, move past them and evolve, okay? So you might not do this so much as maybe another Sagittarius. I'm not bagging on you. I love Sagittarians. I love all fire signs. I love almost all the signs. There's maybe one sign I there's like two signs I don't care for that much. Don't tell them. <laughs> okay. Oh, brutal honesty. Now I feel guilty. And see, that's me reflecting on my ego and pride, even though I have zero Sagittarius in my chart. Okay. So, in regards to your personal growth and development, speaking of which, whoa, they are like, Things are totally different than they were in the past. You've made big strides. Congratulations. You are a different person than you were in 2017, in 2014, in 2011, in 2008, in 1977. Those are important numbers for some people. 1962, 1958. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. 1987 for somebody. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So I'm talking to you. That was a transformational year something big happened hmm I'm talking to you anyway if you're watching this video I guess obvi hashtag obvi okay so what is the deal with your personal development in February regardless for Sagittarius you're having a hard time walking away from something that you know you kind of need to right so if the card was this way it's like I love this thing but I realize it's time for me to move on I'm following my gut instincts I'm trying to find a way to be excited about it and here I go and you're like no I'm gonna stay here and I'm not a quitter and I'm gonna like fight for it I'm not gonna release these things that I'm carrying around with me I'm not gonna do it that's your decision. Um, what's your challenge? To not feel alone. Okay, well guess what? If you release this baggage, you can ask spirit, hey, angels, God, Allah, spirit guides, universe, whatever. You know, um, loving vibrations of the world. <laughs> um, please help me to clear this baggage, this bullshit that I'm carrying around, these things that I know I need to move on from. And as I do that, please help me to feel secure and feel the love from the universe, from God, from whatever, and, and the support in doing this. Please show me a sign that this is the right thing for me to do, that, this is, that I'm going to be comforted in this process. That works so well, especially if you're going through a breakup. This is about a person. This is about letting go of an ex. Super helpful. I went through a lot of breakups in one really super horrible toxic relationship. And I would do this all the time. I constantly would cut my cords of attachment. There's a link to that video in the description box below. Um, but I would also, like, if I started to feel sad and I'm like, wait, I hate this motherfucker. Like, I don't want to, why am I thinking about him? You know, I would then ask my angels, hey, can you just give me an angel hug right now? Like, and they, and I would actually start to feel like tingly and more positive. And sometimes like, you know, cause everybody's a little bit of all of the Claire's. I'm not typically as clear audience as I am clear cognizant, but I would get like a song in my head that would make me feel happy. I would see like a clairvoyant image of something that would make me giggle. Actually, fun fact, currently, um, so my mom died last year and my dad died when I was eight. So me and my sister were like orphans and we're um, having a hard time. I don't want to cry in your video. <laughs> and I actually haven't cried very much. And this is what I was saying is um, because I want to like release it and I want to feel love for my mom, like knowing she's not suffering anymore and things like that. And I'm able to do that. But um, as I'm going to bed the last couple nights, this is, oh, I'm so like, <sighs> okay. So as I'm laying in bed, I keep seeing these really sim silly images of my mom. And she's like a cartoon angel and she's doing like really fucked up things, right? Like she's playing the saxophone. <laughs> Sometimes like I'm just like closing my eyes and I'm going to sleep and then like here she comes like a little cartoon angel like playing a saxophone or like um, pouring a water bottle out like doing weird ass shit. Um, and it makes me laugh and it's like 
then I don't have to feel the lack of her being here, you know, like that I can't call her because I see her and I see that she's like having a good time, <laughs> you know, like she's still being herself. Like she's still being silly. She's still trying to make me laugh and smile. So I wouldn't dare tell my sister that because she's a cancer and she would um, like cry for days. So I'm telling you, and if you know my sister, don't tell her. <laughs> okay. Um, where were we going with that? Was that our challenge? Or that was just in general? Let's look at, no, that was our challenge. How are other people seeing us in regards to our personal development? That we're focused on it, that we're detail oriented? <laughs> um, but they do see us as confused. Like, it's like you're working on all of these different areas of your life, but like pick one so you can do it well. And then be patient and know that any of the work that you're doing on yourself is going to pay off in bigger ways than you imagine. Trust your gut's instincts. Trust your intuition, okay? Now, here's the fun part for me, and hopefully it's fun for you too, but maybe not because you might not give a fuck. Some people are just not into crystals. So your crystal is malachite. This has been actually something that's been popping up like uh, in articles or in, um, I've been seeing it like a lot on Instagram or uh, different places. I don't know. People have been talking about malachite constantly. I had people text message me about it, which is strange because it's not really a stone that I've worked a lot with. But it's beautiful, right? Like, look at how pretty it is, all those little whatever. Okay. So anyway, this stone has tons and tons and tons of amazing qualities. Um, it helps us to kind of express our own fire signness, like our uniqueness, um, our creativity. It helps us to work from our heart chakra, which a lot of your cards said we need to do. It encourages empathy, which is maybe important in that boardroom situation. It um, helps soothe our heart from breakups, if that's you. Helps us to let go of things, right? It has a lot of physical things, too, that it does. It harmonizes your DNA, um, protects you against, like, radiation coming off of microwaves, your laptop, treats your heart stuff, fixes men menstrual cramps, blah, blah, blah. You can look that all up if you want. Point is, if you live near a crystal shop, you might want to go pick yourself up a malachite. Um, you could order one online. You can order this specific one from me on my website if you want to. And if you do that, you get like a whole slew of videos on how to use it. And then also like a big long printout of all of its associations, like what it does, how to care for it, which angels are associated with it. But it doesn't have to be for me. Just get yourself one of these. Some people like to put them in their bra. Some people put them in this one. I don't think you can put in your water if you're drinking it. You could if it was polished possibly, but I think it does have chemicals in it that are not good for you to ingest. Certain stones you can like put in your cooch. <laughs> Certain stones you can't. So it's good to know that before you start playing with your stones. Anyway, that's your stone of the month and love and light. And I will see you in a week or so, maybe two, for your love readings for February. Bye.